What's up, Bird Squad? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Victoria Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about as to why you would ever recommend a Quaker Parrot to anyone. If you're looking into getting a Quaker Parrot and you're still kind of in the midst of your research, keep in mind that all Quaker Parrots are different. Well, all birds in general are different, and they all have different personalities. Just definitely keep that in mind. And my Quaker Parrot's personality may be different from yours. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the video. So since I have two completely different birds, I've been able to experience two different types of personalities. Now, I will go ahead and say that Quaker Parrots Quaker parrots are their own special, uh, their own special breed. They're definitely not as popular as Conyers. So this is a list of things about Popples in particular that I absolutely love about him and as to why I would recommend a Quaker parrot to you. For one, his table etiquette, especially compared to Yoshi. Popples never really flings his food. Yes, birds are messy to an extent, but... As far as, like, not flinging food as much and actually eating his food, not just picking at it and flinging it at me, he actually does a really good job. And he's not... He doesn't fling his food as much, and it's something I definitely appreciate when I'm cleaning up after him. And yes, he's still messy. He's a bird. But he does seem to be less messy than Yoshi, just for the simple fact that he's not flinging his food like crazy. So there's times when I walk into my living room, whether it's to get Emery something or, you know, pick up some stuff off the floor, I'll go over and say hi to Popples and I'll talk to him or whatever. But if I need to leave the room for whatever reason, he will always squawk for me to come back. It's the cutest thing ever. And yes, this is something that's not really favored a lot from people and I totally get it, especially if you're sensitive to like high pitched noises which he doesn't scream it's just like a loud calling call and believe me if it was non-stop squawking I would be like okay dude <laughs> let's find a distraction to get you from uh stop making loud noises because I like to hear okay this is something so silly so dumb but I think it is hilarious watching Popples walk around on the floor. Every time he's walking around, I can't help but to look at him and go, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> like, he, he cracks me up. Like, he just looks like this little tiny blue dinosaur just stomping around. It, it's so dumb, I know, but he's hilarious. Popples is such a grumpy old man. <laughs> Every night he has this routine where he sits up on the window and just looks outside and watch the cars go by. And don't you dare disturb him or he will let you know that he is upset and you need to go and get his Sunday newspaper. <laughs> there's, there's other times, like if Yoshi's doing like his little acrobats on the rope swings or he's, you know, getting into mayhem, Popples will just sit there and just stare with a stone cold face. And all you can picture him thinking is, ugh. Millennials. I know it may sound like I'm totally making fun of him, but I swear he is just so funny in his own way. Now, loyalty. As you've probably heard me talk about in previous videos about him, Pupples is not friends with my husband Nick, like at all. <laughs> And he generally keeps his distance away from my kids. Pupples is most definitely my bird, and there you go, buddy. I'm the only one that could really do much with him as far as, like, handling him and that kind of stuff. And I could see where families with kids would kind of be reluctant to get a Quaker parrot for this reason. But my family has Yoshi to enjoy. He's definitely the family bird, and he's more interactive with kids. I personally love having my own special relationship with the bird that no one else has. And that companionship that we have together that no one else has. Popples makes a point to come over to me and cuddle up. I'm the only one he will step up for and the only one that he will ride around and give birdie kisses to. It does make me feel good that I have my own special partner to hang out with me whenever. The potential to talk. I know just by even saying this, there's going to be people angry with me, but YOLO bro. It's so cool to me that 
Quaker parrots do have the potential to talk. It's something that humans have had this fascination with parrots for a very long time. It's something that's attracted us to them. Is it my main and only reason for wanting a Quaker parrot? Absolutely not. Popples is almost a year old and he still hasn't said anything. I will never love him more or less whether he does or doesn't talk. I just think it's cool. It's like a little bonus of having a parrot. It's like, ooh, this one may talk. I love the little sounds that he does make already where it almost sounds like he's laughing. <laughs> Even though my family doesn't mess with Popples the way that I do, they still get excited when he starts to... It, I don't know, like, it sounds like he's trying to say certain words, but you're still kind of up in the air with it, like, uh, it wasn't very clear, but it still sounds like he's saying certain words. It's super, super cool. Like, for example, anytime I leave the house or whenever I come back, I'll say, hey, boys, or bye, boys, something like that, <laughs> and it's to the point even Emery says it to him. It's super cute, but whenever that happens, there'll be sometimes Popples will kind of almost say it but it's still kind of a chirp with that same cadence you know it just it, it gets you excited because it's like oh is he gonna say something so if you're one of those people that gets mad anytime anyone mentions anything about wanting a parrot that talks make like ice and chill bro because having a parrot that can possibly talk super exciting and can be something positive and a bonding experience between you and your parrot and make you want to work with him even more if he's showing signs of talking it can be exciting i don't know why everything has to be so negative my twitch partner <laughs> i love how popples is down for anything that i want to do he's like oh victoria you going to town i'll come with you Victoria, you need to do some laundry? I got you, girl. You need a co-pilot to slaughter some noobs? I got your back, baby girl. No matter what I'm doing, Popples is down for anything. And it is so cool to have my own little partner in crime that's up to do whatever. Some of you may be thinking, okay, well, from listening to all these reasons why you love Popples so much, it sounds like Popples is your favorite bird. Plug your burb ears, Yoshi. I will say that Popples and I definitely have a special relationship that Yoshi and I don't have. Yoshi is definitely my family's favorite bird for obvious reasons. He's super playful, he will go to anyone, and he's just an all-in-all -all goofball, which obviously kids love that stuff. Popples is more of my introverted, needy grandpa, which may come across as mean or bad, but if you think about it, it matches well with my personality. I want that companionship with an animal, and I want to have this special relationship where they see me as... What are you doing? Because I want that companionship with an animal where I'm the only one that he really trusts and will go to. It just feels special. And the fact that he's really needy with me, I don't know. I kind of like it. Yoshi and I are still super close. Don't get me wrong. But the bond that Popples and I have is just different. So as far as my favorite bird, if I had to pick just one and... Uh, I know that this will come across as like, oh yeah, sure, or cliche or whatever, but I honestly don't know if I could pick. I love them both and I appreciate them both for different reasons, you know? Let's say hypothetically, if I had like, I don't know, five different birds, I would never dislike another bird because she didn't seem as smart as the others, or if she didn't do every little thing that I said to do on command, or if she walked a little funny, or had some feathers missing or something, you know? I would never single out a bird like that, you know? Like, I love them all for different reasons. I'm so thankful that I do get to experience two different types of birds. That's something that I mentioned in my first green cheek video. I was like, you know, if I get a second bird, I want it to be completely different than my first. And I do have that, and it is so cool to see the difference between the two. All in all, no, I would never recommend a Quaker parrot to just anyone. Although I love Popples and his interesting disposition, I know that that's not for everyone, and it's not going to suit well with every uh, personality out there. I'm still kind of on the fence about a Quaker parrot. I'm going to link another video in my description box, and this video is actually the one that made me dead set on a Quaker parrot and made me fall in love with them, like, instantly. Surprise, surprise, it is my mom. <laughs> absolutely love this video. I fell in love with Chopsticks, the Quaker Parrot, and I was like, you know what? I want a blue one of those. <laughs> and I found my own little Chopsticks. 
to be completely honest with you, it does take a special kind of person to um, handle and raise a Quaker parrot. You will have your trials with this breed, but I'm telling you, the loyalty and the companionship that you're going to receive from these birds is honestly like the best thing ever. It, it's totally worth it in my eyes. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and gives you a little insight as to why I would never recommend a Quaker parrot to just anyone and why I love him so much. He's such a cool bird. He's so interesting, but I also realized he's not for everyone. If you're on the fence about getting a Quaker parrot or if you do have one right now, let me know in the comments what your Quaker's personality is like. If you've had any issues with yours as far as like behavioral problems or stuff you're just working on, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to read other people's experience with Quaker parrots. First of all, I do have a couple little parrot plugs for you. That sounded so dirty. Let's go back to shameless plugs. <laughs> did indeed start my vlog channel. Thank you guys so much for the ones that voted on my can you get up there, buddy. Voted on my Instagram story and my community page. You guys I think you need your little nails trimmed. <laughs> I did indeed start my vlog channel. I am super excited for this one. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. But thank you guys so much for the ones that uh, voted on my Instagram story and my community page. You guys came up with the funniest names I have ever read before in my life. But the Burb Diaries did win and had the most votes when I combined them from my community page and my Instagram story. You can find that link in my description box if you want to check it out and potentially subscribe. I think we'll have a lot of fun together on there. If you are wanting to start your own vlog channel with your burbs, go ahead and check out those names. I highly recommend that you look at them because they are so freaking funny and I would hate for them to never see the light of day again because they need to be used. They're hilarious. They're super clever. So definitely check out those names. I'm going to leave that poll up just so other potential influencers or whatever can go look at them because they're pretty freaking funny. I also started my Twitch streaming account singing my bob and I'm super excited about that one too because if you are a gamer you should definitely check me out on there if you're just bored and you want to watch popples and I be the laughing stock of the gaming community go ahead and find us on there that will be linked in the description box as well I stream for sure Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the rest of the days are just kind of random whenever I'm feeling like slaughtering news you know and lastly, I know I've kept you guys here for so long, I'm so sorry, but lastly, I need your help once again. I have been working on this top secret side project for a while now, and there's still a missing piece of the puzzle that I need you guys to help me out with. I'll go in more detail in an upcoming video as to why I needed this, but what I need from you, Burbs, what are you looking at? <laughs> you can give one major piece of advice to a beginner bird owner or a potential first time bird owner, what would it be? And that can be anything from like what you wish that you knew when you first got a bird, certain products that you wish you knew about and had when you first got a bird, or even something that you regret doing or not doing when you got a bird. It's just be respectful about this, uh, advice giving. We're not here to tell people what to do. We're not here to, to um, tell people how to raise a parrot or anything like that. We should be uplifting one another and coming together as a community to help one another out with our birds. So if you can give some honest, real, respectful advice to first time or potential bird owners, please let me know. So a few places that you can let me know about this advice, you can either comment it down below this video or you can go to my community page right now and this will be titled up in a little like comment thingy on my community page and you can leave your response there you can dm me on instagram also have the option to leave your name attached to your comment whether it's your youtube name your instagram twitter whatever just let me know what name you want beside your comment and um, if you want it to be anonymous, just put anonymous in that comment too. But you have to put anonymous. Otherwise, my default is I'm going to put your YouTube name attached to it. But if you want it to be completely anonymous, then you can definitely just message me on Instagram. And then that way, no one online on YouTube can see it scrolling down through my comments. It'll be in my DMs and I won't share it with anyone else other than your comment. And it'll say anonymous. So if you burbs can do that for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. It probably makes absolutely no sense right now. But it is a side project I'm doing for an upcoming video. Um, and I would just greatly appreciate it if you guys can help me out with that. 
And I feel like it would be very, very helpful for people in the future. Wink, wink. There isn't a deadline on it, but obviously the sooner the better. So if you could do that for me, I would so much appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for the announcements and my shameless plugs. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Let me know if you're getting a Quaker Parrot. If you're considering it, if you're no longer considering it because of the videos, let me know. And don't forget to check out my description box for some fun stuff going on in there because it's Delaney James. So I hope that you did find this video helpful and that it gives you some direction to decide whether a Quaker pair is right for you or not because it honestly does take a special kind of person to handle these boys. Why are you looking at me like that? You know it's true. So thank you to the burbs that recommended me doing this type of video. I truly appreciate it and I really enjoyed making it for you all. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you all so much. Don't forget to pack that subscribe button to join the burbs pod and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.